District Weekly Recap. This podcast is proudly sponsored by Uncle Pasta Spaghetti and Sausage. It's Italian the Uncle Way. On last week's episode, the boys took a look at the new Halo show. Neither of them had anything good to say about that fucking Paramount Plus garbage fire and were quite disgusted at the results. The boys also discussed the Baldo, nutsack dildo that lets you have sex using your nuts, and the many logistical nightmares of using such a thing. Finally, the boys visited the R Meth subreddit and watched a video of some girl smoking meth. <laughs> this has been the Big Boy District Weekly Recap. Thanks for watching. All right, that was great. Thank you. Thank you, me, for creating that beautiful recap. So, what's new <laughs> with you? Oh, you know, um, just over here creating the worst uh, worst podcast. I don't really remember that any of that. I had to, like, dig deep into that, into the last part to actually deduce that. And it was a pretty, <clears throat> pretty terrible oversimplification. But yeah, we uh, we were pretty um, pretty not sober. True, maybe I can't remember. I remember we both talked at length about how Jesus Christ, my TV is low. Uh, we both talked at length um, before the recording how not sober we were. So that was probably not our best work. <sighs> I hate to like bring this topic back up immediately, but uh, the Halo show. It just keeps getting worse and worse by the second, and it's amazing. It's it's almost like they they made that show to spite Halo fans. Like everything they do is just a dagger to people who like Halo. <laughs> like, okay, so like the latest episode I saw, I like I couldn't sit all the way through it because my breaking point was when Master Chief like had his helmet on, took his helmet back off, and then put it on again for like two seconds. And then immediately took it back off. And I was just like, who the fuck? What? I, why? Yeah, my theory is the actor who plays um, Master Chief is just, like, really narcissistic. No, I'm, I actually, I don't know. I don't know the guy, so this That'd be is fucking just hilarious. Joke. He's just like, guys, I'm so handsome. Can I just, like, not like, wear the helmet? <laughs> I know that's, yeah, like, a like Master he's, Chief he's... key thing. Let's just pretend <laughs> Master Chief was beautiful. <laughs> just gestures at his face. <laughs> <laughs> fucking the fans are like tweeting at him on Twitter, like, dude, fucking keep your helmet on, goddammit. And he's just like, man, don't hate me because I'm beautiful, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he just pulls a Lamar. Go toss a salad. Everyone's like, what is wrong with this guy? Why is this Master Chief actor so deranged? <laughs> Yeah, maybe if you had a better haircut, women would actually like you. He he looks like Adam Sandler, and I'll die on that hill. He just looks like Adam Sandler. Every time I see him, I just think of, like, Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore or, like, Billy Madison. <laughs> he does look like Adam Sandler was, like, sent through a gene splicer. Yeah, he's like Captain America Adam Sandler. I don't know. He's not... I'm not saying he's ugly. I'm not, like, shitting on his appearance or anything. But it's just, like... Why the fuck does... Like, why? In what world do you think it's a good idea to make a Halo show where, like, Master Chief never takes his helmet off? That's, like, a big part of his character. And then you make a scene where he takes his helmet off and then, like, puts it back on for, like, two seconds and then goes out to a battlefield and immediately takes it off. Like that, no, that makes sense. That specific scene was just an absolute like gunshot to Halo fans. <laughs> like, well, I haven't seen the newest Halo episodes, um, and I also haven't seen the movie that I'm about to impart opinions on. So, um, doesn't mean I'm not gonna do it. Uh, the fan, I heard that the Fantastic Beasts thing that just came out with um, the wizard shit. I heard that sucked. Oh yeah, what a dumpster fire! Nobody even knew that that was coming out. That that yeah, movie that movie had like no marketing, and then when they finally were like, "Hey, guess what? Uh, find out Dumbledore's secrets or whatever," like they made a tweet, and the the tweet had nothing but like fucking Dumbledore gay joke replies. 
And everyone was like, what's well, Dumbledore's secret? How many cocks he can fit in his mouth? And like, like shit Jesus. like that. The, the fucking account started hiding all the tweets. But if you can still see them. If you go to, like, the hidden replies, you can just see all the, like, gay jokes and shit. Like, oh, what's Dumbledore's secret? How, how fucking big of a dildo he can take in his ass? It's like, holy shit. It's fucking hilarious, though, because, like, that tweet was, like, it just came out of nowhere. They were like, oh, yeah, by the way, this th we made this movie, and it's out. We, like, forgot to advertise it. Yeah, and right before the movie came out, like, literally a week ago, J.K. Rowling decided that it was the perfect time to go on another series of transphobic tweets, <laughs> which is just so stupid. <laughs> She God damn, she's, like, she's yeah. like so, at this point, like, she's I don't even... She's literally the most famous transphobe in the world at this point. Like, she literally is obsessed with, like, the opposite of trans rights. Like, she, uh, she has the tweets this... are... She has the this... tweets are literally like, I'm not a transphobe, but here's a bunch of transphobic shit. And it was like, yeah, I don't, I don't even know the specifics, but I do know that... I did some face palming because, like, a week ago, she just couldn't drop it. And it's like, bro, we get it. You don't like gay or trans people, so, like, <laughs> why, why do you keep talking about it? I just, like, I wonder if she's reached the point where she's just so rich that she doesn't care about making money anymore. Because she always does this shit to her own franchise, and it's like, why would you do this to your own shit? Like, why? It's well, like when she just started adding all those dumb little lore tidbits nobody cared about. Like, oh, did you know there were no bathrooms at Hogwarts? So the wizards basically just shit their pants and got rid of it with magic. It was like, that's that's unnecessary and gross. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, I wasn't curious, bro. Um, that's like if, yeah, if she... fucking J.R.R. Tolkien just came out of the woodwork. Like, I know he's dead, but it just years after Lord of the Rings came out, he's like, oh, yeah, by the way. Frodo and Sam did not stop to take bathroom breaks. They just they wore their they D pants. Their pants. They just yeah. shat on the go, crapped as they went, because they didn't have time to stop and shit. Just think thanks for this has been my Tolkien talk. Like, okay, why? There's some well, things we don't she need has, to know. <laughs> she has an even worse form of George Luke. Like, you know how after you know how George Lucas pretty much accidentally made Star Wars and it turned out to be, like, really good? And then, like, he couldn't redo that with the prequels? <laughs> like, yeah, because his wife was no longer involved. And I, I still I still think that his wife was, like, low-key the genius behind Star Wars. Like, at least you know, one and two. Because she wasn't involved in Return of the Jedi, and that's when you can see, like, where the quality starts to dip. Return of the Jedi yeah. is by no means a bad movie, but... Like, it's not the best. Album, objectively, right? I think it's the worst of the, the original trilogy. But yeah, so circling back around to my point, she fucking has like George Lucas syndrome where she just can't let her franchise like die. She just wants to keep adding to it. And, and the things that she adds are so unnecessary. Like I already understood Dumbledore and Grindelwald's fucking relationship. Like I didn't need to see a movie about it. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and the thing is, is Hollywood, like, the way they were marketing this movie I saw through Twitter was like, oh, like, this is the most pronounced gay relationship in a movie ever. Like, we're champions of fucking representation. And it's like, dude, they're, they're literally ex-boyfriends that don't ever even, like, talk to each other during the movie. <laughs> it's so stupid. I don't know. It, just all around, she just can't come up. Like, she should have just disappeared off the face of the earth after the last Harry Potter movie was released and enjoyed all her money. Like, do you remember how much people used to love J.K. Rowling before she went crazy on Twitter? Yeah. Right? Like, she could have gone down in history as one of the greatest writers of all time, and now she's just, like, now people just hate her. You know what I mean? I think a big... Arguably just probably the biggest bottom line in, in this movie being such a flop is that people just do not give a flying fuck about Harry Potter prequels. Like, they just don't. Like, I saw somebody tweet that, and it was just like, yeah, it's so true. Like, you never hear people talking about, like, how excited they are for, like, the new Harry Potter prequel movie or whatever J.K. Rowling's gonna write. It's like, yeah... 
I don't really know why. I feel like it's just one of those things. I can't really explain it. Well, because that was a pretty, like, self-contained story. Like, yeah. nobody's nobody's looking at that story and thinking, like, oh, gee, I wonder what happened before this. You know what it was implied happened before that? Kids went to school, and then at some point in the past, Voldemort was a bad and Grindelwald was bad. That's not very interesting. Like, with the Star Wars, I could see why people were excited for Star Wars prequels, because that seemed like a world where it's like, damn, I wonder what the Clone Wars was. Like, there feels like there's a lot of history in this world. Harry Potter's world just kind of feels like it starts and ends with Harry, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I agree. It's just like, it, it feels not necessarily like it's a small world with not a lot to expand on, but just a lot of it's just already there. So it's like, yeah, I can just kind of imagine the rest. It's not really something like Middle Earth where it's like, oh yeah, this is like a whole other world and it's it's really, really deep and fucking... You know, even that, like the the Lord of the Rings prequel stuff, a lot of that shit's boring too. Like, well, yeah, because all the interesting I, I, I have stuff like a, is I have a fun. thing exactly. Like, I think at the end of the day, I just sort of have a thing against prequels. I just don't like prequels a whole lot. I think they're just I mean, kind of boring innately because you I already know be... that like the better part of the story has already been told. <laughs> like, I think it would be interesting to see maybe like like someone design a series where they already have an idea for the prequel you know what i mean as they're writing the original yeah so that way it was all already like planned out from the beginning <clears throat> but i don't know what do i know you know like the opposite of something george rr R. martin would do <laughs> how funny would it be george if george rr R. martin tried something like that but just fell back into like his old lazy ways and just stopped so like he started a book like a series from the end and he's like, All right, let's see how we got here, but he never like gets that middle part of the story done. The George R. R. Martin um subreddit is so fucking funny. Oh my god, bro. So literally they all just talk about how much they hate George R. R. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. So like that reminds me of the official our... podcast subreddit. <laughs> Yeah, and Joe Rogan subreddit. Yeah, holy shit. Fucking Joe Rogan. Fucking Ro Jogan. Dude, Joe, Joe Rogan should be like our version of Voldemort. He should be yeah. like like he who shall not be named or whatever. <laughs> yeah, don't ever say Joe Rogan's name on this <gasps> podcast again. Sorry. It's sorry. taboo. Starts now. It's taboo, Harry. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, George R. R. Martin's fucking subreddit is so fucking funny. Because they literally just, like, post things like, wow, look at how Brandon Sanderson wrote five books during the pandemic. I really wish we could get our author to write one. And it's just like, yeah. damn. It must suck. It must suck. How, does, how do you get that fucking rich off an incomplete fucking book series? Like, fuck you, Dude, man. You shouldn't be allowed much... to have access to that wealth until you finish it. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the pretty... fuck? Pretty much um, the the prevailing theory right now is that the way that the show ended is is exactly what he was going to do, and now he doesn't know what to do. That sucks, because I heard at one point that he was planning on, like, throwing people a bone, like, oh, I, I'm sorry that the show had such a shit ending, so for the sake of that, I'll actually finish the books, and I'll give it a proper ending. But knowing George R. R. Martin, it's like, dude, you, he's just so fucking lazy, you just you look up a picture of George R. R. Martin in the dictionary, or okay, I fucked that up. You look up a picture of the word lazy, and it's a picture of George R. R. Martin like <laughs> chilling on his ranch, just with a fucking bucket of KFC. If you look up the word lazy in the dictionary, you'll get the word lazy. What the fuck was his contribution to Elden Ring? God damn it! Because I can't find anything anywhere that gives me any conclusive information about what he did in that game because i swear to god like his name is on it it's like it's like miyazaki and george rr R. martin's elden ring but like i don't know like i can't find anything about what he did even he himself said he had a very minimal contribution so like what the fuck did he do did he just like blast a fart in the general direction of the studio and they're like oh cool we'll put george rr R. martin's name on this big fantasy game of thrones guy 
American yeah. love George R. R. Martin. Like I tried to find that out too, actually, because I was curious, and it kind of just sounds like he and Miyazaki had lunch like one time. <laughs> <laughs> lunch. <laughs> <laughs> They talked about vague fantasy. Like he asked Trump George R. R. Martin Trump. what his favorite video game was. George R. R. Martin's like, "Oh, I'm a little too old for video games." And Miyazaki was like, <laughs> "Understandable. Have a nice day." <laughs> that was it. Well, it kind of just sounds like they had lunch like one time, and they talked about like vague fantasy elements for like an hour. And Miyazaki was like, "Sweet, we can put your name on it." <laughs> and then they gave, they gave him a check for several hundred thousand dollars or whatever. Because, yeah, I saw a fucking article where George R. R. Martin was, like, getting interviewed about it or whatever. And he was like, yeah, I didn't really do much. And then he didn't really go much further. It was just like, all right. I feel like fucking, I feel like Kelso in that episode of that <laughs> 70s show where he's trying to figure out what his dad does for a living. And the whole time his dad's just being all cryptic. And meanwhile, it's like Kelso's stupid enough anyway. So it's like, holy shit, man. I'm just going to say you're a farmer. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> Solid metaphor. <laughs> Took me a minute to catch up. <laughs> I was just, just going to say, George R. R. Martin probably came up with one of the bosses. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like... He came up with that stupid fucking tree boss in goddamn Dark Souls 2 or whatever. Oh, yeah. The fucking curse-rotted Greatwood. That boss was, was just bad. Once once you figure it out, it's a really easy boss, but God. He just drops, like, zit bombs on you. And then he collapses the fucking floor. Alright there, bud. So... What's another topic you got on that there list of yours? Um, so the other night we got really drunk and stoned and played Dead Space. And I want to talk about Dead Space, because uh, Dead Space is fucking... That game has held up insanely fucking well. The graphics were surprisingly good. Like, I was kind of shocked. Oh, I know. Can you believe they're they're remaking it, too? So it's going to have, like... Like, dude, this remake is probably going to be, like, the best-looking game ever made. <laughs> like, for based like on the Christ footage I've seen, I was like, levels. ooh. Yeah, it's not even, a, like, a remaster, I don't think. I think it's, it's like, a full-blown remake. I imagine they're going to leave most of it probably, like, the same, though, because, like, I don't know how you would really remake Dead Space 1. Like, that game is... It doesn't really need to be remade in the same way that, like, Resident Evil 2 got remade. <laughs> But my god, that game was still so good. And we only made it to chapter three. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was another time where, like, I don't know, I just, I need to stop trying to take edibles, because they literally just make me pass out. I was getting there, too, though, because we we had those those red, ample, hard ale Oh, yeah, things. those were, like, surprisingly <laughs> strong. I was like, god damn. But yeah, that game visually has held up really well. It still, like, feels good. Because you know how when you go back, like, even when you go back to, like, 360, PS3 era, a lot of those games just feel kind of clunky. And you're like, man, this is weird. I remember this game feeling really smooth. Like, Dead Space still feels really fucking good. And, yeah. like, I don't, I don't really get scared by horror games, really. But uh, Dead Space does have really good use of, like, jump scares and shit. And just overall, the atmosphere and the horror setup is just really good. I don't know, I think it's a fucking masterpiece. Definitely one of the best horror games ever made. Right up there with, uh, with probably with Fear. Have you ever played Fear? I have not. Fear was really good. I wish that I had the first one, but... I don't know, I might be able to get it on PC, because... I think that game's on 360... But it's like a fucking really janky port. Like the console version of that game sucked ass. I tried to play it on PS4 because it's on PlayStation now, and oh my god, it, it it feels like you're trying to control someone having like a crippling. Like it feels like you're in anaphylactic shock or something. Like your character just is stumbling, trying to get to the phone to call the ambulance. It's just, a, it's so clunky and unresponsive and bad. 
but I think the PC version is better. Anyway, I'm getting in the woods. Dead Space is good. Fear is good. First Encounter, Assault Recon. The second one is also good, but the ending is really weird. Do you remember how Fear 2 ends? It, it ends with your character getting raped by a ghost. Jesus Christ, I've never played the Fear games. That sounds fucking, <laughs> like, intense. Now, I'm going to sound like a fucking wacko saying this, but the game actually does it in a surprisingly, like, tasteful way. But, yeah, it doesn't really change the fact that you get raped by a, a naked woman ghost. Pretty fucking hardcore. <coughs> yeah, that sounds, um, that sounds kind of fucking awful to witness. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Yeah, I was, I was a little kid when I played Fear 2. <laughs> oh, I was Jesus uh Christ. I was probably in like s fucking 5th or 6th grade. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, cuz I got my 360 in 5th grade. Cuz I got it for Christmas from my parents. They're like, "Here you go, you little bastard." That's exactly Enjoy. what they said. Just kidding. <laughs> my mom used to take me out back and throw apples at me. It was <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I got. Means... Go ahead. Oh, you can go ahead. I I, I don't even have an idea really. <laughs> oh, I was just gonna say. I was just gonna kind of conclude. Yeah, I did. I do enjoy Dead Space all this time later. Me too. Also, Dead Space too. But I only that game is on two discs for some reason, and I only have the first disc. <laughs> so if I can obtain that second disc, we can play all of Dead Space one and two. It'll or be we can great. just play the first part of Dead Space 1. Yeah, and then just never touch it. <laughs> just get to, like, always... get to like chapter 5 and then be like, alright, cool, we'll just pretend we beat it. For, uh, I had an idea for another topic and then I immediately lost it. Did it have anything to do with... Um, did it have anything to do with Steve Shurupa of no, Soprano, Sopranos fame? I he played, do not know. He played Bobby Baccalieri. I do not know my Sopranos lore I'm just, I'm just bringing this up because I know that you're a big Steve Shurupa fan. I, you, you, you usually can't go like a single episode without bringing up Steve Shurupa and that time you met him at Disney World or whatever the fuck. <laughs> 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 yeah, why don't you talk about Steve Shiro? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Steve's pasta sauce. <laughs> so tasty, Wait, you can dip he, your balls in he, it. <laughs> is he Uncle Pasta? <laughs> he kind of is, actually, because he was... Remember on the Eric Andre show? He was the guy who got his pasta sauce. Uh, he, he had the, the naked PA dip his balls in it. And then Steve Shiro I, got super pissed and tried to kick Eric Andre's ass on TV. I do not remember. <laughs> You're talking a lot of gibberish. <laughs> yeah, I just that was that was a lot. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh like man! You're speaking a lot of gibberish at me there, bud. The answer to all your questions is is on YouTube, but until then, the riddle remains. Okay. So well, that was a solid topic, I guess. We already talked about this at one point. I think I, I just randomly messaged you this out of frustration. But uh, I think joints are a vastly inferior way to smoke weed. I think joints just suck. They're a wasted fucking time and energy and resources. They always fucking canoe. And unless you're a black guy, you probably can't wrap one. Blunts, on the other hand, I'm all good with blunts. Blunts are, like, way more easy. They're to the point. They don't fucking canoe nearly as much. It feels like you get more out of it. Joints? I just... I don't like joints. Every time I smoke a joint, I'm just like, cool. I got this for 10 cents at the dispo because of a deal. And I'm going to be disappointed. Because the second I light it, it's going to canoe. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of joints or blunts. I prefer bongs. Yeah, I prefer bongs. Bongs, I think, are, like, the best way to smoke. I know that technically, like, you're supposed to get more high if you smoke out of a pipe or whatever, but I think bongs are just the best. Especially a gravity bong. <laughs> if I had one of those, <coughs> holy shit, that'd be cool. Gravity bongs are just fun. They're just they're just novel. They're, they're not practical <laughs> at all. You ever, you ever smoked out of a gas mask bong? Yeah. 
It's it's unenjoyable, but it it does get you pretty fucked up. Yeah, it's one of the most unpleasant experiences of my life. Yeah, it's so uncomfortable. It feels like you're just straight up suffocating yeah, through yeah. weed fumes. It just it's just a torture method. It feels like you're being like waterboarded with weeds. <laughs> what if we used gas mask bongs to like interrogate terrorists and shit? <laughs> <laughs> like fucking like we should pitch that to like the CIA. Be like, dude, you can get them super stoned. That'll make them like dumber so they'll be more likely to tell the truth. Not to mention you're basically waterboarding them at the same time. So you're, you're scaring the fucking bejesus out of them and you're getting them high as shit. It's it's a win-win, or kind of, I don't know. Depends on the terrorist, I guess. We're talking the types of people that, like, shoot up heroin so that they don't feel gunshot wounds, and then they, they take a shit, and then they coat the bullets in the poopy so that when they shoot someone with the bullet, it gives them an infection. <laughs> I'm wait, I just want to go back. <laughs> okay. there the, again, that was a lot that you just said. But I'm gonna ignore it for the mo most of it. <laughs> go back to the beginning of the sentence. Just imagine our, our two fucking dingleberry asses walking into the CIA in like fucking like <laughs> we just have gas casual. mask bongs, like in a suitcase. <laughs> like we just invented them or something. We just have business casual attire on, and we're just like we have like a whiteboard with like <laughs> information on it. We're like, all right, we have new torture methods that we've been thinking about at length. The main one is you take this piece of drug paraphernalia and you strap it to someone's face, and yeah, you shove this bong up their ass, light it, and the rest speaks for itself. It's called it's called a. Uh, Fucking Chinese chimney torture. Chinese chimney torture, yes. <laughs> Alright. Let me take a look at my fucking topics here. Oh yeah, this was a funny story. I'm pretty sure I witnessed some uh, it attempted... Uh, what's the word for this? Not, it's not really like insurance fraud. I think that's kind of the word for it. I'll tell the story and you tell me what you think. So this, this lady at King Supers... The other day, the, this, this grocery store, I feel like a lot of people don't know what King Supers is because it's kind of a Colorado thing. It's a fucking <laughs> Kroger store. grocery store. Yeah. I'll just call it a Kroger for the non-Midwest people. But yeah, this lady had a shopping cart and she's like rambling her way through these aisles and she's like making her way towards the exits. And then she accidentally like, she starts slowing down, but she sort of like taps this Asian lady in the back. And then like, you could tell that the lady wasn't, like, hurt, really, because it was a fucking, like, love tap. It was literally, it was like if someone, like, scooted by you and they're like, ooh, sorry. It was kind of like that, only with, like, a shopping cart and kind of, like, dinked her on the side of her big fat ass. And then the lady who rammed her with the cart was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And then she starts, like, panic apologizing. And the Asian lady turns around, like, really slow with just this, like... Just no expression on her face at all. Just kind of turns around like if you were going to... Like if somebody said your name and you were going to turn around and be like, Oh, hey, what's up? She just sort of turns around and then gives a solid like five to ten second pause. And then starts slowly like groaning and going... Ow! Oh! <coughs> oh! And then the lady starts panic apologizing even more because now this lady's acting like she's about to fucking die. Meanwhile, I, I pulled a serious Matthew Stafford, and I got the fuck out of there. I was like, this is awkward. So I don't remember what I said about the whole Matthew Stafford thing when he did that. Because remember when Matt, everyone was giving Matthew Stafford shit for walking away from that lady who tripped? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember what I said. I'm pretty sure I definitely wasn't defending him, but I'm officially defending him because I did the same thing. But, but anyway, that's my story. Did I witness attempted insurance fraud? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know, because what would she have possibly gained out of pretending to be slightly hurt in a Walmart? That's a good question, but at the same time, I'm racist as shit for saying this. Uh, she what she did look like a, like she maybe wasn't like super duper, like in this country for very long. So maybe she doesn't really know that the rules of that type of shit. I mean, frankly, I don't know the rules to that type of shit. So maybe she was thinking, oh, maybe I could, like, sue this random person for this 
shop car, shopping cart of salt or whatever. I have no idea. Yeah, so I don't. I mean, I'm, I think you might have witnessed somebody lying, but I don't necessarily know if they were committing like insurance fraud. Yeah, maybe she was just trying to make the lady feel extra bad, even though the lady clearly already felt bad. <laughs> I mean, yeah, people are weird, man. I don't like going out in public. <laughs> oh, scared. I know. Like, people, especially nowadays, are, like, is it just me or are people just getting ruder and ruder? Like, people are just so fucking rude out there nowadays, and it's like, what the fuck, man? It, way to rain on my friendly ass parade because I'm like the nicest person ever when I'm like out there dealing with like especially like workers and shit because I, I am myself a worker so <laughs> I know what how, what it's like so I'm nice to everyone so it kind of baffles me when people are like dicks especially like customer service type people it's like what the fuck dude this is just this is a wacky world we live in I think COVID really unleashed the demons in a lot of people. <laughs> it really did. It was COVID, Trump, and Harambe. Yeah. The trifecta. Seriously. And Russia. And uh, Elden Ring. <laughs> yeah, it was Elden Ring. As soon as Elden Ring dropped, everything went to shit, bro. Everything went to poopy McDoodoo land. And they call me Perpy. You a big um, fan of that perp? Yeah, I, I like it. What's your favorite like celebrity endorsed product? Uh, <laughs> like uh, you got like um, <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop, Steve Shirapa's pasta sauce, Dan Aykroyd vodka, Crystal Skull shit. Fuck man. Um, Paul Newman I, had a pasta sauce. <laughs> I think, I oh wait, like no. Dan Aykroyd's vodka. Really? Have you tried it? No, but I do like the idea of oh, it. Oh, yeah, me too. I was going to say, man, if you've tried it, that'd be fucking awesome. I want to know, <laughs> know what that's like. No, I'm not spending like 600 bucks or whatever it was. Oh, no, it's it's only 50 here. bucks. Like It's only oh. like 50 some odd bucks a bottle. That's the funny part, because he was like, I'm Dan Aykroyd, and I filter my vodka through 300 million year old diamonds. And it's like, no, you fucking don't, you lying ghostbuster son of a bitch. It turns right. out he, fi he filters them through Herkimer diamonds, which aren't even real diamonds, and you could probably fucking find some in your bedroom just hanging out. But yeah. There's I'm no glycol. <laughs> no glycol. Which is probably why it tastes so shitty. You can tell it tastes shitty, because like every, every like show that he went on to promote it, he was like drinking with uh, the hosts and shit and they were they all just had this look on their face where they were trying to hide it but you could tell that it was gross and he was like yeah I don't have any glycol or additives also known as you know the stuff that makes vodka palatable yeah vodka's fucking terrible let's just admit yeah, it yeah vodka's <laughs> like vodka's pretty much just jet fuel <laughs> yeah it tastes like fucking antiseptic <laughs> Well, I have some of my own ideas for some cool uh, celebrity products, uh, like well, like maybe uh, Steven Seagal oatmeal. And I, I I came to that conclusion because I think Steven Seagal kind of looks like the Quaker Oats guy now that he's old. Like their faces um, look very similar. I, I'm I'm gonna have to pass on that one. What's the What's the next one? Um, the Adam Driver workout tape. We okay. call it we call it squaring up with Adam Driver. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for that guy because he like worked really hard to get like buff as shit for that role, and everyone was just like, <laughs> "Look at his chest." Yeah, it was he does ridiculous. A, he does have a Stan army though. <sighs> All right, Amy Schumer laxatives. Uh, or maybe eh. it's like Amy Schumer colostomy bags or something. And, I mean, she's not really a celebrity so much as a public enemy, so. That's true. I like how Amy Schumer sucking is literally the one thing every human on this planet can agree on. The only minority to that is Amy Schumer. Uh, yeah, did, you, did you ever see, um... 
did you ever see that time she threw herself in front of Kim Kardashian and Kanye West? Oh on the red yeah, yeah. Oh, that was one of the cringiest things I'd ever oh, fucking seen. I hate thinking about that. Because they both literally just didn't react. Uh, J Jason Statham cigarettes. I don't know if you can do celebrity endorsements for cigarettes. Jason Statham can. Okay. Oh, have a smoke, fag. Have a fag, fag. Because he's, he's British, so he can call them fags. How come when British people call cigarettes fags, it sounds cool? Like, it actually does. Like, if a British guy like were to come up to you and be like, I might, can I have a fag? It's like, well, okay, that actually sounded kind of cool. But if I were to come up to you and be like, hey, can I have a fag? You would call me a fag. I would not. I don't use such words. I, 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 I am, I am above that, and you are beneath <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> Just shit. thought I'd let you know. <laughs> All right, time for an ad read so we could sell some shit to these retards who listen to this show. This podcast is this podcast is sponsored by Uncle Pasta's Spaghetti and Sausage. Uh, it's Italian, your uncle's way. Get lasagna the way your uncle would make lasagna. Okay, thank you. I didn't actually have anything written down. I just decided to wing it. Uncle Pasta's 1-800-UNLIMITED-DINE-AND-DASH-PASTA. Get yours today. Also, I think yes. they're, um, we are experiencing a nationwide sausage shortage. So get it while getting's good. I just made that last part up. <laughs> okay, I made the whole fucking thing up. It's a fake sponsor. No, it's not. Hey, 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 hey. Let's move on. <laughs> have you, okay. Have you ever... Do you want to hear the story of my favorite movie miscast of all time? Go it's ahead. Like the absolute, like, worst fucking actor to play a, a certain character. Okay. So... You, you you know who Genghis Khan is. I, I know that you know who Genghis Khan is, right? Um, yeah, he was he was like he was that Elvis impersonator from the nineties. Yeah. So I, I can go ahead and test your knowledge. Um G Genghis Khan was in fact a big American white dude from Iowa, correct? Yes. Okay, so that means that the perfect actor to play him in a movie is obviously John Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I do remember this. I remember when John Wayne was fucking cast as Genghis Khan. <laughs> so, for anyone who doesn't know, this movie is absolutely fascinating. Because you have to kill the Chinese pilgrims. I, I, swear... <laughs> I swear to God, John Wayne playing Genghis Khan is like the least interesting part of this movie. So, so like... It was so Howard Hughes made the movie, and uh, <clears throat> I can't remember exactly where, but it was in some like nuclear radioactive fucking test site. So there was radiation. It was somewhere in the desert, and they filmed the movie there. I don't know why they filmed it there. I don't know if you got like a sick tax cut from filming on like radioactive land or something, but Howard Hughes was like, "Sweet, we'll put the movie here." And the movie was literally like, fuck, John Wayne is Genghis Khan, and um, filmed on this radioactive test site. And I'm pretty sure the vast majority of the cast ended up dying of cancer a couple years later. Damn. And uh, John Wayne, he he died of cancer too, but not because he actually like. I mean, it might have been because of the the movie. But uh, the the common consensus was, I mean, John Wayne smoked six packs of cigarettes a day. So when lung cancer killed him, it wasn't really that fucking surprising. But yeah, that's that's the rough story of the Conqueror. I'm sure there's a YouTube video that probably gives a much cooler synopsis. But uh, yeah, also a fun fact: Howard Hughes was so guilty about getting so many people sick and killed during that movie for, by filming on like fucking fallout new vegas world that he like locked himself in a room naked for like f what was it like two months straight or some shit 
and just watched the movie on repeat, and he would not leave the room. Two fucking months, naked, locked in a room, nothing but like a creepy red light, and that movie on repeat. Fucking wacky. Damn. What is it? Why is old Hollywood such a like fucking hellscape? Like, you, did you ever hear all the stories of how horrible the filming The Wizard of Oz was? Oh yeah, like fucking um, goddamn. What was the girl's name who played Dorothy? This is gonna drive me crazy. It was Judy Judy something. I can't remember her last name. What the fuck? But yeah, I remember her her like diet was just like a couple of apples and then like twenty thousand cigarettes a day or something yeah fucking i'm trying i was trying to look it up but i can't I'm pretty sure a bunch of people died of asbestos poisoning on that set too oh yeah oh shit well i i think that's literally all of my topics yeah, the J.K. Rowling thing uh, was just about the only one I had. Same. I wish I could come up with another. Wait, hold on. Let me go here. I was skipping around. There's a. Oh, yeah, I was skipping around. I didn't. I missed a good one here. I, I told you about this one, but uh, yeah, I told you this was. This is kind of like an old-ish story. This happened like probably a couple months ago or something. But this this lady. <clears throat> who was was uh, was taking in like these random like just animals from like a, like just wild animals from around her neighborhood? Like she had like some foxes and and some squirrels and some other just, like random like shit like that. Um, and then uh, the the state found out that she had these animals and she was like keeping them as pets. And she didn't have a state approved wildlife permit, so they took all of her pets and euthanized them. T yeah, took all the up. took all the animals and just killed them. What, what, what kind of what kind of fucking sense does that make? Like, you're not like I can't remember where she lived, but I did research on it. Like when the article came out, and in that in the particular state she lived in, it was it's illegal to shoot pests. You can't just kill squirrels and you know go out go out of your way to kill animals and stuff. But, but if you take it into your house and, and you name it and you love it and you make a pet out of it, th they'll come and kill it. What, what yeah, kind of sense, sense does that make? <laughs> what the fuck? Well, <laughs> that's, that's so, that's bullshit. Yeah, that is pretty fucked up. I mean, I wonder if she like, I, I just wonder if she had like some dangerous <laughs> shit in there, like they didn't even release them back into the wild. They just <laughs> just killed them. Oh fuck, man! Yeah, that makes me like angry, and it's like both like frustrating and hilarious. I know time. it's weird. Like part of me is just like, holy shit, that's awesome, that's comedy gold. But another part of me is like, what the fuck? That's so gay. Why would they do that? Oh my lord. Alright. That was good. That was a good BBD. That was a big black dick in my butt. That young big boy district. Hold on here. Well yeah, I guess we could we could probably wrap up. This is probably like an average ish length of an episode. I always think that these topics are going to take us further, but like they, they don't because they're just not very good topics that I come up with. But they're good enough. They, they suffice. I mean, I get some good laughter out of it most of the time. Yeah. I yeah agree. Call, pause the recording again because I'm stupid. All right. Well, yeah, well, I guess that'll be the end of uh, this episode. I'll uh, put together another like funny voice recap. I'll do that until it gets old. <laughs> It'll be great. But yep, uh, goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.